Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the three to eight player game, Last Message, designed by Chua Lee and Ki Young Kim, and published by Yellow, who helped sponsor this video. Good news, detectives, a crime has been committed. That's not the good news. The good news is that we have a witness. Well, even that's not the good news because the witness is unable to speak, but they can draw and they're going to help us identify the culprit in a vast crowd by giving us the picture clues we need to find them. As long as the criminal doesn't interfere, which they will. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. First, stretch this included screen across the table and pick one player to be the victim and another to be the criminal, sitting both of them on the same side together. On the opposite side, seat the other players who will act as the team of detectives. The game comes with six different crime scenes spread across these various double-sided sheets. So find the four sides that match the crime scene you want to use, and then put them all together to form one big picture that the detective players will put in front of themselves. Now find the smaller matching fold-out sheet and give that to the criminal and victim. They'll unfold and set it in front of themselves. The victim then collects a marker and the four erasable boards. The criminal instead takes the sand timer, a marker, and this clear token. They then examine the scene in front of them and pick one of the characters from the hundreds of possibilities to represent themselves as the criminal, placing this transparent token on it. They have to pick a sentient character, so no animals or plants, but zombies and aliens or even stars, since they seem to have faces and personalities here, are okay. Based on where they place their token in this example, our criminal will be represented by this creature in this game. They do this in secret. Only the victim and the criminal should know which character has been picked, and the screen helps ensure this. And that's the setup. In the last message, the victim will be trying to help the detectives uncover the identity of the criminal by drawing clues for them but the criminal player will interfere with this by erasing parts of the drawings. The game is played over four rounds, and each round has three steps, starting with the victim leaving clues. Here, the victim will examine the area surrounding the criminal, which is the figure marked with the criminal token. Then, after a reasonable amount of time, which will be based on how generous the criminal is feeling, the criminal flips the sand timer, giving the victim 30 seconds to draw and write clues for the detectives on one of their four blank boards. These clues can be made up of text and or drawings drawn within the nine squares, but can cross over from one to the other. For example, I might focus on the bowl here that I see near the criminal and then draw a bowl and also write out the word bowl as well. I can also see a three-eyed alien nearby, so maybe I'd draw that too. As the victim here, you have a lot of freedom. For example, you could write out Check the bottom left-hand corner of the crime scene. Or, it's an alien with purple skin. Or, this alien looks a lot like our friend James. You can even draw a big square representing the whole scene and put an X somewhere to represent where the criminal's located. The only real restriction when writing words is that you can never repeat a word on the same board. So if the criminal was near a star, I could only write the word star once, even if there are several stars shown nearby. That said, you can draw more than one star if there's more than one in the area, but the drawings have to represent different stars. You can't draw the same one over and over. So each of these two are two different stars that I saw near the criminal. For example, I had noticed this three-eyed alien near the criminal, and I drew it here. But there's also another one nearby as well, and I could try drawing that because it's a different three-eyed alien. So here's a valid example of how my clue board might look after trying to draw a series of clues and words on it that highlight the multiple aliens, bowls, stars, and some other clues I came up with to try to help the detectives find the criminal. Once the sand timer runs out, the victim must stop, and we go on to the next step of the round where the criminal covers their tracks. Here, the criminal takes the board from the victim and fully erases any five of the nine spaces. And with that, you can probably see why it's a good idea for the victim to spread their clues around trying to imagine how to arrange them so the criminal can't too easily destroy all their hard work once they get done erasing. If they don't spread their clues out enough, they might even be handing the detectives a blank board. Now, 
Once the chosen spots have been erased, the criminal hands the board over to the detectives and they start the third step of the round, choosing a suspect. Here, the detectives will look at the board they've been handed. The victim should also get a good look at it too so they know which clues remain and can think of how best to help the detectives in the next round. Using the clues they have, the detectives will now choose one and only one character from the illustration in front of them that they suspect is the criminal. The criminal player then confirms if they got the right character or not, but says nothing else. If they picked correctly, then the detectives and the victim all win together. Otherwise, you start a new round with the victim taking one of their blank boards and drawing up another series of clues while the timer goes for another 30 seconds. Each round resolves just as before, except that during the second round, the criminal may only erase four spaces instead of five. In the third round, they may erase three spaces only. And in the fourth round, they only erase two, which you're reminded of in the rule book and here as you're seeing on screen. I should also mention it's okay for the victim to repeat clues from one round to the next. The rule about not being allowed to repeat a word, for example, is specific to each new board. So if I wrote the word alien on one board, I could write it once again on the new board if I wanted. Also, in the third steps of the round, when the board is handed to the detectives to examine, they add that board to any previous ones they'd already collected. In this way, they can compare the new boards to the old ones in case that helps them out. By the end of the fourth round, if the detectives have not correctly identified the criminal, then the criminal wins the game. After you've played a few games, you can increase the difficulty level if you want using these options in the rulebook, where at the first level of difficulty, you can no longer use text in the clues. You can make it harder by also having the criminal erase one extra space per round. And for added difficulty, instead of choosing a character, the criminal picks an object in the picture. But otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Last Message. If you have any questions at all about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. And you can also support us by joining our Patreon, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.